Thank you very much, Millie. And you're spot on, guys. Do, uh, do get involved in the conversation we have you on Twitter and, of course, the stream chat. All you need is that hashtag WGLEU. Myself and Melly already have been sort of neck deep amongst that one. Plenty going on. And uh, speaking of what's going on here, let us see where we are at throughout our first day. Of course, we've had already two matches, and let's bring up those brackets and see exactly what the situation is. School bus over T T CM, should I say, 302. And now, obviously, School Bus moving towards the next match, which will feature Kasna Crew. However, we have some unfinished business to look at in the lower bracket. TCM and Coreplay obviously moving down to that one, and they will need to fight for their chance to stay in this event. So, obviously, if they win this game, they do have a shot and making their way up to the upper bracket and, of course, tomorrow, tomorrow's playoff stage. So uh, that is the match of the moment and definitely the one we want to be looking at and learning a little bit more about. And to help us with that, Dorshan and his friends over on the analysis desk have got all the answers. Well, let's hope we have all the answers because so far uh, the, our predictions aren't going necessarily as smoothly as we would like. We over-predicted uh, the ability of core play. We thought that they were going to do a lot better than they did against Kazna. Uh, I, I say we, I mean you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, man. Thank but you, really. Now we can see them against uh, TCM. Now, TCM were, I, I love what they were doing, but it was very similar to C Play. They were being very aggressive. They were being very unique with their sort of strategies and stuff. So I would say that this matchup is much, much harder to predict. I haven't actually written down my prediction yet. I'm still thinking, who is it going to be? I I'm kind of swaying towards TCM. They feel a bit more stable, a bit more experienced. But uh, their actual lineup, uh, I was just talking to Still Mojo between the matches, and he said that their actual lineup is inexperienced with offline events. They've got one or two of their players who are really experienced, but the rest of them haven't actually been offline so much. So that might be a bit of a problem. So first of all, let's talk about uh, C-Play and uh, let's try and see how they can recover and bounce back to this. So C-Play, the guys that uh, are young, they're really passionate, slightly inexperienced compared to TCM. So your thoughts on how TCM can fix, uh, not TCM, C-Play can fix their play style. Uh, I think Cruster needs to uh, say to the guys that let's just forget the game that we just played because they don't have really a time to analyze the game because they are starting to play the next game right away. But TCM had the time to just think what went wrong and broke out their game and start again. So yeah, I think for C play it's, it's all about to shut down the last game and start over and working their own tactics. But I have to disagree with you with one thing because the, I predict that the, this game will be a bit similar to the last one, TCM will be playing more like a Kasna, waiting, because Kasna, uh, TCM only played aggressive in mines, and uh, C play will be the aggressive one. Well, I agree with you there. I do believe, looking at core plays, core play, uh, <laughs> that they are very aggressive. They're very impatient, which actually will play into TCM a lot. They are very much more relaxed. They're very much more experienced. And I feel that they will be able to control the battle that little bit better. They'll be able to just see what's going on. And what we said originally, which Oli disagreed with, was that they will see what's happening and adjust. And that's where their strength will be here, their experience of being able to adjust to what's going on. Whether a core play will be able to keep up with them, we don't know. Now, we were talking about uh, the people on the team that we are most interested in. So ex excluding the Razor-powered uh, MVP, we were looking at the other guys in the matches. Who are we going to look at to see what they can give to the team? Now, what we discussed beforehand was Trevor's. You know, the British guy he comes to the scene. He has captained his own team of UK only guys a lot. He's got a lot of experience like that. He came to see play and he's given them a bit more of a another look, a bit more of an expert. He's, I think, the oldest member of the team. Yeah. And he's given a bit more experience and calming them down. So he's the guy I'm looking at to see maybe he can bring core play forward. I'm just waiting, you know, to... We didn't have a chance to see at the camera, and I also cannot have a chance to, you know, to see guys from C-Play, how, you know, the look of the faces. But in this moment, when you are young, you know, it depends on the character. And I just hope that, you know, they are not crushed because of this loss. The only thing, I, you know, I have, uh, like, an advice to Raster is to, you know, have a stick up to this monitor and say, do not push and look at the timer. Two minutes, my friend. Two minutes, and you can start attack. That's, it, there, there is only two mistakes, so if he takes it down, it will be really, really close match. Yeah, true. It, it, it can definitely go either way, and I think if Core Play can get inside the thought process of TCM, they can actually take them apart. Uh, still, Mojo is worried that they don't have the experience of offline events to actually hold it together so much. Maybe that will be a problem, maybe that will be an issue. I think so, yeah, it might be an issue, but like, if C-Play play it slow, they will win. 
in my, in my opinion. But if they rush in, like Mojo has enough experience to just defend and win that. So that will be the key. It's the key matches. to victory. The TCM have the patience where Coreplay does feel like they are as youth is, is kind of like the thing of it. Everyone knows that young people are more impatient, more impulsive, and it really seems to be showing in their play. And I like it, but it might yeah, not pay off for them. And also, if you look at the, you know, the guys, they are all, they have 11 players, so they can discuss, and if somebody is, you know, too angry or not feeling well, you go to the bench, I go there. They have Shartak to look at this, they have Magus, they have Devil, they all the guys are really old, and, you know, they can, they can play, they know how to play, and they also know how to react to other people. And I like, how to the, talk I like to the way you say they're really old. They're, they're older. They're no, not no, no, really no, no, no. In, <laughs> okay, we are now we are now in you know in esports. Mm -hmm. So the six, three, almost never body see the guy who is over thirty. Ne never in all the other games. Here you have uh, in Counter Strike you have like guys like 26, 27 are the you know highest a uh, age in the game. In other games, MOBA games. The, uh, the average age is like over 18 or something. Well, yeah, I, I have to say that I think it's a beauty of the World of Tanks. Like in, in, in sports, you have the veterans and you have the youngsters and you can combine a team from those two to fill out the, each other. So I think that's the, the really good thing about World of Tanks. Definitely a unique situation where the older you are doesn't necessarily remove all of your skill. No. Where in a lot of the Twitch-based games, you cannot play beyond 24. It just won't keep up with the rest of them. Okay, so I think that is everything for this uh, this matchup and we should move on. Okay, so um, fair enough. We should go into talking about Thoris of TCM. And uh, Thoris is the guy that you were talking about earlier. You didn't know too much about. You wanted to talk about Thoris from TCM. No, I'm just uh, telling that Thoris is one of the, my best friends in case of World of Tanks. And he's also, you know, you should see in the min minute or two the video from about Thoris, how big captain he is. And I, you know, really waiting to see uh, the TCM under the command of Taurus coming out to the loser bracket and doing something. In the same moment, I'm, you know, cheering up for Raster because he's a young guy. I really appreciate how he's, you know, reacting with the team, how hard they are training. I think they should, you know, should get something from that. And this is the worst situation that one of the teams already goes down. Also, we should remember that the team who ever wins this will face off the maybe again their opponents from the first game, or if they win, they will face Virtus Pro tomorrow. So it's not that good decision for them, <laughs> and it's a good opportunity. Well, you say it's, it's not a good opportunity. It's better than going home. <laughs> so it's, it's just not going to be a very pleasant one that they have to go through against Virtus Pro. But then again, many of the teams here have got something to prove. They really want to face Virtus Pro because they want to take them down. They want to prove how good they <laughs> are in comparison. But talking about TCM and their 11 players, uh, the fact that they can uh, sh uh, exchange as they want. Now, Shathak, that is the thing that he talks about. Like, he really says, like, okay, if a guy's lost his cool or isn't feeling well, he can just say, okay, Instead of arguing with him, just just please leave, and we'll get a guy to sit down in your place. And he can do that, and that, this is one of the advantages, I guess, of being in your home country. Uh, definitely, many of their players. And Magus is there. Um, you know, he's actually from Cologne. He's not his home city at all. So you yeah. you got a lot more extra flexibility there with his teams. But we're going back into the maps now. And we can see if you guys are right with the maps that you feel that are always going to be banned. Now, I believe you said it's Stevs and Prokhorovka that you feel is going to be the absolute uh, always play, banned ones. With Cplay, maybe C uh, Steps again. They will try to do it again. But yeah. I I'm not in the mind of the of the roster. If they join it really hard, maybe they will stick up to the steps. But like the one map roster always banned was Prokhorovka, so I'll bet they stay with Prokhorovka as their ban. Yeah. That's I'm concerned that steps they want to yeah, get rid of no, because no. they messed it up so badly. They want to remove it from the pool, and I feel that the team just, even if they know what to do, they don't want to do it again. Yeah, and if maybe. they did it again, they're gonna feel yeah, really nervous. Prokhorovka on it. down. So Prokhorovka is the third one. So the fifth map, that, as in the third mini band. Ask, 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 ask. You or think Ruinberg. it's gonna be Insk? No, Ruinberg. I Insk think or Ruinberg. Ruinberg. Yeah. I'm going to go with Ensk because uh, TCM already won in Ruinberg. They might feel uh, a bit confident in that, and uh, C-Play doesn't really want to play that. 
Okay. Well, we did see C play. Yeah. Well, Cliff is one of the ones that C play want to get to the front. No, you, I just hate you. I just hate you. <laughs> you are the best. C play want to yeah, get Cliff like to the front. They were really good on Cliff, and they probably want to. They're really comfortable with it, so they're not going to pick Cliff at all. They're going to leave it to number one if they can do it, because they're going to feel like they got the edge there. Uh, they have the confidence. Their team is going to be confident. Okay, there. Himo. So Himo will be probably a decider in this moment. Okay, so now we got the combination of Mines, Runeberg, or Cliff. Now, in which order do you feel <laughs> they're going to be coming out? Uh, Mines, you really want to have a cap. Also Cliff. So Cliff, Mines, and then Runeberg. Cliff, Mines, and Roomba. So Cliff, I'm really surprised that Cliff was put there into third place. Mines is going to be the but second it, map as, as yeah, always. I, I was going from the behind. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, so Mines is going to be second, and Roomberg is the opener. Now, Roomberg has only been seen once, obviously, and TCM did it very well. But if they're going to be playing the... <laughs> them, man, I hate them. I, 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 you, you, you don't go. win always. There yeah, you yeah, go. You I was like... carrying on trusting your guys' opinions. But... You cannot trust. Oh, the hugs are out, yeah, yeah. these two guys. They are, they are really trying to go No, he it. wanted to make break his reap, but he didn't have a ch the power to do oh, it. Oh, come on. Anyway, so we cute. are looking at Mines as the first game. Now, this is... I was actually going to talk about Runebook. TCM probably don't want to play on Runebook so much because yeah, they've already shown their hand. And the, the pink hat. cowboy what a picture. hat. Yeah, he's from Belgium, so he's weird. <laughs> Okay, right. <laughs> we actually thought that you were going to be wearing that on the stream when we saw it in the studio. Uh, no, the bet is they will wear it tomorrow when they if they will win. So. Oh, so they have to win to be able to wear yeah, that yeah, tomorrow. That, so. Yeah. Otherwise, okay. I will not wear it. So. Fair enough. Everything on their hands. <laughs> okay, so we have, um, you guys need to start doing your bets and see who you think is going to win. Is it going to be a 4-3 on Sam River? We haven't actually seen Sam River yet. Or we, we have... Uh, one of the teams edging out. Now, I do feel that um, one of these teams have an edge. Uh, I've already made my play have clear, but you guys out there in the crowd can definitely vote if you go to Facebook and make yourself, your opinion known. Make sure you give the guess of what you think is going to happen. We're doing it here on the desk. You guys can do it at home, and I believe there's a chance, if you guess it right, to win a code. Now, Melly is obviously the one who can talk about that more later, but uh, you definitely get involved, guys. You always have more chance to earn more premium, more gold, and more tanks. So don't show anybody. I said keep it secret. Carl. She doesn't see it. Anyway, so TCM versus core play. Youth versus experience and patience versus You aggression. know what? I will, I'm really looking at the faces of the guys, but I cannot... You know, get anything from the guys from Seaplane. They are really looking really calm, and I like it. This is this is one of the things I don't know. I like. I think their princess is getting them calm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think maybe, maybe, but you know, we'll find out soon enough that who will be making the stupid decision and who will be making you know, a really great ones, and we'll be you know, tied it. Mojo, like always, looking at the monitor, thinking what I should do. I, whenever I've talked to Sil Mojo, if anyone's ever met the guy, you can never get him to raise to anything. I went and said, like, what happened? What happened with TCM on that last map? I couldn't believe that you guys lost it. He just looked at me and was like, I'm thinking about the next game. Yeah. And he, he, he wasn't upset. He wasn't excited. He, his, his name, Sil Mojo, is the most accurate name I've ever seen. He doesn't seem to bat an eyelid about Anything. I think if a nuclear explosion went off, he would just step into a into a doorway and hold on and just wait for it to pass I, and, and come back out. And, to and be honest, it's, it's quite funny because if he, you know from this his region when he comes, yeah, from Serbia, it's it's quite uncommon to be you know find the calm people. Yeah. Yeah. It's one you know of the culture things, but we'll find out. At the moment, really, I'm I'm waiting to find out what core play will do. I'm really w waiting, but like you see. Guys, guys, younger. Then you have the old boys. <laughs> okay, but without bringing age into it, let's let's remove that and look just at their performance okay. um, for this day. Because remember, this is the last fight these guys will have. Whoever loses here is out. So. C play have been playing uh, inconsistently. I, I think it's the best word to use. It's not being super strong, not being super weak. It's just being not so consistent. Whereas uh, TCM, they were outplayed by School Bus in a very short way. Now, uh, I want to know what you think could happen. At TCM, they were just slower on their decision making. That's kind of how I feel that they lost the School Bus. They were just a bit too slow in their decision making. Do you have an opinion on that? 
I think Cplay is just too rash right now in their decisions. So that will give uh, still Mojo's team an edge. So I think TCM might bring it home. Do you think they have the slight bit of an edge? What yeah. about you, Wilkie? Uh, I think in the last two matches these guys played, or the one match that they played, it was um, TCM made more mistakes than Cplay. Cplay was forced to make mistakes. <laughs> so I'm going to go with Cplay. Okay, so Cplay and you, Carmen? Cplay. Cplay, okay. So I think we're split a little bit again, as I feel that TCM's experience is going to carry them through. But why don't we go over and see what Pansy and Laughter think of this matchup? <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. And it is great hearing from them once again, obviously, on the analysis desk. Thank you for breaking that one down. And uh, obviously, Princess Cowboy sitting out there as well. We got the devil and the princess in that, in it's, that it's little a segment. It's like a Disney story about to unfold <laughs> on the stage. Uh, we are both very excited for this game, though. Uh, jokes aside, core play up against TCM. Obviously, the big fact here is that we might actually lose out on you know, a very strong team quite early on. You know, you, you could argue TCM probably are the stronger side. But core play are dangerous. They're, they're the team that you can't underestimate. And we know that TCM choked to an extent. There's a lot on the line here. What what can we say about these two? What are the major factors coming to this game that could either win them the game or lose them here? I think I completely agree with Analysis Desk. If Core Play can slow their gameplay down, and Schnitzel said it perfectly, be less rash with their decisions, they can win. You know, this is a team that brought Virtus Pro to the edge at the beginning yep. of the season. Yeah. When they win, they win because they make educated decisions. They make good pushes. They don't just, you know, decide to to go random, to go YOLO, to try, you know, a lot of new things. They, yep. they like to they like to play logically up to a point, and then they just kind of go screw it, and and that's when they lose the game. That's the point when they lose. TCM, on the other hand, you know, they constantly try new things, but when they try them, they're often very, very good. But they lack that last five percent to actually win, and yep. that's where the C play needs to exploit that last five percent. If they do that, and for sure, I agree with the analysis desk that they could actually win it. But it's going to be hard. My money is on TCM. And looking at the online stages, TCM beat C play 1 0. Not a big scoreline, but still a win nonetheless. Certainly going to be a factor coming into the first map, which is mine. And uh, maybe it's just to get the nerves out of the way for TCM. If you start on a map that we pretty much made a meal of, at least it's done. You know, it's out of the way there. And, and you can kind of predict how C play play this one. Unless they bring out something new, we need to see which side they start on. But still, do you think that's part of the mentality here, just to get this map out of the way, as it was the one that they fumbled against School Bus? I'm not sure. I'm really surprised. Like Carmen, I thought Ruenberg would come first because he it does give... It makes sense. It, it makes sense. You know, you can actually just draw it out if you really have to, even when you're on the back foot. So Mines is, is a map we often see being won. Um, mm. And TCM starting to push up the hill pretty aggressively. Thoris, Eurofish going first. Um, at least a standard start for them. And, and perhaps even uh, Kazna Cruz tactic being used by Cplay. Sending Ruster and Nervax towards the left side. You know, Nervax, Ruster, in my opinion, the best two players on C play. Okay, yeah, De Kilzo has done more damage than all of them, but I, I like the whole package Nervax and Ruster it's brings to the dynamic. equation. And, you know, Ruster did the most damage just behind um, uh, Elian in the last matchup. So uh, uh, he's on point, which is great to see. Uh, and it's one of those teams where you look for the main man and you kind of see, okay, that's where the tactic's going to come from. Um, so a bit of back and forth. Still Mojo on the hill with no damage as well. A big plus there for, for TCM. But then again, you know, C-Play aren't even contesting it. So hardly surprising. But let's let's really break down the mentality of these two teams. If TCM fumble this map in any way, shape or form, it could be such a downward spiral. We've seen it from every other game in any kind, in any major sport, that when there's that mental block there, it can really cause a problem. So TCM need to be very cautious. They need to play very standard. They need to play tactically sound. There, there can't be anything that goes wrong. If one player maybe slips and makes a small mistake, normally for TCM, it'd probably be fine. They are a very experienced, very calm side. But then you add in the pressure of the last game, the offline environment, everything gets added up. So you can't let them get that little bit of a chink in the armor that could crumble the rest away. And I think we're seeing that here. They're being cautious, they're being careful, and they're being smart. There's a lot of time to play with. We have seen mines being drawn out before. It's nothing new to us. And maybe that's just what TCM want. They don't like this map as a decider. They don't like it as a second or third. They just want this one done and dusted. And I don't blame them. Um, but all in all, C play also have to be able to respect that TCM are probably going to play fairly passively. They need to keep that in mind that they're going to be looking for the easy exploit rather than the routine. And at the moment, you can see Eurofish there just, just looking around, trying to find anything, maybe get a couple of spots, trying to find any uh, pixel out of place. But I don't think he's going to get much here. Let's be very honest. And 
could you see this one being drawn out in, in real logistic terms, or is this too much of an easy win map at the moment? Um, it's kind of middle of the road. We've seen draws um, a lot more towards the later season when teams uh, discovered the double T32 camp in the south, um, the KJ line. Uh, so it really does depend how much C play wants to play into that tactic. You've got the kills are there. Haki playing the same position as German Brat played in the uh, previous game against C play as well. You know, sitting right back and and indeed, as I said at the beginning, C play seems to be doing exactly what Kazan Crew did. Mm -hmm. um, and it really depends if they've trained it and and really if they've seen what makes that tactic work. Because we've all done it before in in any kind of sport or league or. At the top, you copy the best team, but what you don't realize is that the best team is, is good at that tactic because they're the best team, because they have mm. the players in that team. And by copying it, you're not actually doing anything. You're not being productive. You need to play your style to get the most out of it. And as uh, Taurus and Eurofish fail miserably to get themselves up the hill, perhaps they need to learn how to drive first. Oh, you know, Ruster and uh, I, I think Nervax could probably give them some lessons if they need. They can just pop over and be like, hey, guys, have you got two minutes just to help us out? Yeah. Um, but obviously, guys at home, do get involved yourselves using the hashtag WGLEU on Twitter and let us know. While you take a run-up at it, do let us know your thoughts on the matchup coming up here, which is TCM up against Seaplay. These two teams have a lot to prove now. They've been struggling not only to make it up the hill, but also to make it out of their first games. As uh, I think they're going to just try and get away with it. They're like, no, we didn't even want to do this in the first place. We're going to go away now. We're too cool for it. Too yeah, cool just, for just, it. Don't, just don't look at it anymore. We're going to, we're going to go the other way around. Um, it, it, showed a, it showed a little bit of in, in, uh, good play from TCM. They, they knew probably where C-Play are, but as I said, any mistakes that happen for them, it's going to start weighing heavier. That's when you start second guessing, you start doubting the calls. And we said it before, you know, listening to the communication, the communication being on point, it's so vital and it must have broken down that last game. So they need to keep that faith all in the right place. And how important is it to you when you were you know, playing back in the day to actually have full faith in the cause of being made? It, it's 100% um, you know, essential because yeah. as soon as you start doubting it, then you start, start doing your own thing. You start playing your own game. Um, and often you're not in the right mental state when you're 100% focused. Um, to actually make the right call. And afterwards, you're kind of kicking yourself because you're like, well, my team captain, who's t playing a tier one, for instance, can see what's going on. He's making the right decision. But me and my ego is getting in the way yeah. of that. And it doesn't matter if you lose. You have to trust in your team captain's ability because otherwise it's just point point of playing. If you can't trust in your rest of your team, you can't, you know, play your designated roles. This is one of the reasons why Virtus Pro and Navi do so well. Because they got Dulux um, as a captain, because they got um, Power Slide and Levsha kind of giving the calls, because they got crates on Virtus Pro mm. side, you know, it's it's these calls that make a difference. We've seen, for instance, from Synergy in the European League, that one change, Stalker going out made a big difference and suddenly you know school bus seemed to have a, a more of a, a stable mentality towards the game instead of doing like season one where they came first and you know season three where they they they, they got trashed by virtus pro in the finals so and and you can't even talk about the grand finals where they they didn't, didn't they even make it out of the group stages getting parred by um uh mouse sports then so interesting stuff um from them but i'm just gonna be wondering what uh, TCM can do, because at the moment, C play is just waiting. They're doing what you wanted. Sit back, play this map out, move on to the next. And it's important for them to do it. Make sure they get that pacing right. You get you get this pacing within the inner team almost. When you're, when you're nervous, when you're a little bit, you know, hungry for the win, you try and speed up things. You make these small errors that do become such a bigger problem later on. So if they keep this pace, they're able to slow down, Keep the discipline there. Make sure they're playing the smart game. Don't don't think the game's over because obviously TCM can still cause a threat. But play smart, play safe, and play to the time. If they get this map out of the way, which I feel as though they, they'd want to do, generally your, your first pick, as we've seen so far, has mostly um, been, in fact, for them to either draw out from a mistake or win from a mistake, should I say, or draw for. We've seen Ruenberg once. We've seen Steps once. Uh, you, you could argue both are drawable. Uh, but mine's generally not something we'd see along that factor. But funny enough, both teams did win on those first maps and more because they exploited the mistakes of others. But it does look like TCM are considering their options. Disney and Neuralfish are rejoining the forces towards the center of this map. But I, I think Carmen summed up well. You, you don't start pushing before that two-minute marker. You want to leave that little buffer period to be able to run away and play it safe and draw it out. 
Do you think this might end in a push or is this just to reinforce that central area? I think it might end in a push. Um, you know, as you said, two minute markers where you can kind of be safe. Mines is a very small map, so you know you want to be one and a half, two minutes before you actually make that push. And obviously TCM haven't got a specific tactic for this map, so it would make no sense for them to go and just push into C play. They haven't yep. got a good idea. They haven't got any anything innovative like they tried against School Bus. So what's the point? Let's just sit back, wait until we have that one and a half, two minute marker, then we can push in and be you know safe in the knowledge that we can't lose this. We can draw it at the most, and that will give both teams one point. And really, it's quite interesting because the next map would be Ruhrenberg. Mm. And there's another map where you can do exactly the same thing. Yep. On. So I'm not sure how that's going to work out. TCM caught out School Bus um, down to some miscommunication errors, uh, Arklet said. But in my opinion, they just got outplayed on that map. Um, so whether the two teams wanting to, be, wanting to be drawing that one as well, it's going to be really interesting. Since so Sand River becomes an option at that because point. Because then Sand River becomes an option, unless one team just ends up playing superbly and having really, really good tactics for the rest of them. And the deciding map, if it you know, either between Sand River or not, would be going into Cliff. So another map that can be drawn to an extent. If you looked initially, at, you know, when it first came into rotation towards this season, it was certainly you know, had the ability to do so. But if I was TCM, that'd be the last map I'd want my fate to be decided on. They're a team that aren't known for their aggression or um, aim players, let's say, excluding maybe Ural Fish to an extent there. But outside of him, they're not the most aim-based heavy team in that aspect. Whereas, you know, C-Play can play that aggressive um, aim, aim focused style, which you know, Sand River can depend on sometimes if you are on the attacking side or if you're on the defending side. You need to be able to land those shots and come up with the aggressive play to suit it. So there is danger in the maps they've picked here to actually end up on Sand River. I, I, I'm not sure. Ruhrenberg is going to be very deciding who starts in the south, I think, because C-Play could probably look at Sand River and go, that's not a bad choice. I, I feel it'd be dangerous, but not a terrible option. Whereas TCM, I feel it'd be awful. But the thing is, I think later in the tournament, you want to, you want to have um, Sand River because Sand River in Assault style is really one of those maps where you can have a really crazy tactic for and win. Yeah. And really, you can only have a couple of those crazy tactics. So you don't want to be at this stage of the tournament, you know, the first day, the pre-playoffs, going all out, showing your crazy uh, Sand River tactics yeah. to everyone. So you want to be chilling out and winning on the normal maps. As predicted, Mines is going to be a draw. Mm -hmm. um, and it does beg the question is, does C play or TCM have anything good in store for Ruhrenberg? Obviously, C play hasn't played that map yet. So we yeah. um, we'll have to see what innovations they brought there. But it's going to be a draw, one point apiece for these two. Um, moving on to the next map, I said Ruhrenberg. Now, TCM winning against mm. School Bus on Ruhrenberg, as analysis desk said, it's going to give them a little bit of momentum and a little bit of confidence, perhaps. Yeah, and I, I look back to uh, the interview after the match with the uh, school bus captain, if you can call it that. Um, and he, even he said he, he, they didn't predict what TCM did on that one. That was them expecting them to be in an X location and them not being there and they're not really adapting well. Now, I feel that obviously C Play were going to be watching that game. You'd at least hope so, keeping tabs on how they played it out. Maybe if they work that out a little sooner, we could see the clash, let's say, in the city side, because that's where TCM initially focused. Mm. Unless they completely switch up, this is just theoretical. They go for the same play. This is also, as you mentioned, a drawable map. So there's a lot of worrying factors here for me that could put TCM in a very awkward predicament. We know they can choke. We know they're very talented and very experienced until that last 5%, as you said. If they keep drawing maps out or playing for the slower gameplay, it will have to come down to the 5% which can go so wrong. We've seen so many teams going out in these tournaments in group stages or even earlier through the online season because they made those silly mistakes in that 5% marker. I'm hoping we see the action coming down on Ruhrenberg to start this game really rolling to see where the teams are at because so far, C play have been able to go, okay, we've come off a loss, no worries. We're still sat where we were. We've not had any downtime. They've still played consistently. Another factor I want to ask you is how important is it to stay warmed up to you because... TCM obviously had a little bit of a game off. They had one game out in between their first game and now. Whereas C Play have been sat there the whole time now. They're doing a game back to back. Mm. Now, would you rather have had the break to mull things over, discuss, or just go and warmed up and just feel the momentum bringing you through? It depends as a win or loss. I mean, to be honest, I'd prefer mm. to have a break if I just lost a match so I can kind of yep. get myself sorted mentally. Obviously, we've got practice rooms here, so they can go to the practice room, they can be kind of warmed up they can be training yeah, yeah. They can be playing random battles so they can still feel the game um uh, and i think that kind of 
alleviates any of the stress of not being warmed up in the game. And to be honest, he play looked a bit down against Casa Crew at the end. Yeah. So I would prefer to be in TCM's position for sure, um, especially because they made such f like fundamental, intrinsic um, mistakes as opposed mm. to you know little um, kind of individual player mistakes. Those are the mistakes that you can't really fix. Individual players just need to do it themselves and improve. But it's the really fundamental things that you need to be looking back on and saying, okay, so that matchup went like this. If we go into the next matchup, we need to fix it. Otherwise, we're going to lose for the same reason because it's fundamental. It's not player-based. So I think that's what TCM could have done. That first map didn't give us any kind of indicator because TCM didn't end up pushing off the hill. I thought they would. Um, but then again, the decider map, Sand River, is based mm -hmm. on how much damage you've done out of all the maps. So you don't want to be giving away too much HP for that reason. Yeah, and at the moment, you can see C-Play just discussing those final options. As well, TCM, just making sure everything's ready, everything's good. Magus just being told, get into game. Please stop looking at Facebook. Uh, obviously, they're just going to make sure everything is uh, good to go. And obviously, a big deciding factor to this. Teams are now ready, it seems, and we'll be finding out if they're going to actually go for it here on Ruinberg. It's it's a big factor. A lot of questions that we've been ans uh, asking each other will be answered here. Will they be playing for another draw? Because Cliff is a dangerous one to leave it hanging towards. And then Himmelsdorf and Entz because the finals possibly, but we'll see. See how this goes down. Rimberg obviously quite decisive towards side start as well. North and South very different on this. Different options become available to you. And obviously tank picks another big factor between these two. So as you can see, two very well-known teams by now. You know them both. I take you through the lineups, but TCM, the veterans to this sea play the new kids on the block, and let's find out what they can bring. In the north, in red, it's going to be TCM, and in the south, in blue, it's C-Play. So the southern camp is completely optional for C-Play, not quite the same for TCM. But what are we seeing so far, do you think? Uh, Thoris doing the normal spot with the MX-1390 in the middle. Unusual that uh, TCM is going all towards the city from the north. You usually have the better position to go towards the, um, the village because you don't have to cross so many ob obstacles. You can be there quicker. TCM won it from the south by using that advantage. Uh, but they're expecting C-Play to camp, and that's exactly what C-Play is doing. They're sitting up in towards the HK line, and we're seeing the first time on this map one of those uh, normal camps from the south. Now, this was broken by Yasuba against Lucky Cracky, and that's mm. probably the main reason why Lucky Cracky aren't here at the finals, yeah. um, because they did get that camp broken. So it's dangerous. TCM can still win it. And to be honest, as a team, I would train that. I would train it 100%. I would train it for at least, you know, an hour every day. Train to ca uh, counter that camp, because it can only be played one way. So you know what positions the tanks will be in, you know what positions um, the scouts will be in. You know, okay, the IS-3 has to be here, the AMX-5100 has to be here. So there's not really going to be any dynamic play from the team you're attacking, you're countering that camp with, so you can kind of say, oh, as long as we have a training partner, we can train this 100% and really expect the same kind of response from the other team. So at the moment, you see, um, it, it's fairly similar to what they did from the Southern Star, but as you said, the map doesn't necessarily favor the uh, Northern Spawn in this aspect, but they're still trying and I'm a little nervous for them here because it is C play saying, all right, well, we're, we're okay to draw this. We are still okay with this. They're playing passive. They're playing slower, the thing that we wanted to see. And we yet to see TCM's adaptions that we all wanted to kind of witness. And uh, we've seen TCM do the strategy before, leaving Still Mojo to be the linchpin if he moves a little closer towards the other side of this, uh, well, the cross pretty much by the church. He does like to play around that marker and get the assistance through. But already a couple of shots going flying. They need to be careful because Still Mojo's out on his own quite some way. He's just using the line of sight perfectly, though. He's got the church there, so no, no one can shoot through a church. So still, they're just staying alive, not losing any HP, just being logical, playing the routes of attack perfectly and getting himself into a good position. He's going first. The rest of uh, TCM will go second once they know the coast is clear. A little bit of a risky move there, heading across, but um, you know you can see the kind of lineups these two teams have picked. C player have got double IS3, triple AMX5100. There's no T32 there, so you don't have to be totally worried about the hull down tank. You know, there's not so much rate of fire. Um, so I think, you know, as TCM executes this perfectly, it, it could go in their favor. But at the moment, C play for sure have that advantage. And, and C play really is a team. When they camp like this, when they stay back, it's very, very hard to beat them. I'm trying to think, was it the 110 that was in play here when we saw the Southern camp, camp when it went wrong? No, it was the T32. Was it the T32? Mm -hmm. Okay, it was the T32. I was trying to remember which 
Tank was kind of the questionable choice that may have been the major factor in it being broken. Now, as you mentioned, they're not in position. We could see this, uh, this whole strategy once again being very strong. Nervax being baited out on the shot there. Still, Mojo might have the uh, lineup if he fancies it. That's the thing. He, he baits the shot. So basically, you can continue aiming where Nervax is, and he can make the next shot against Nervax without Nervax being able to peek. Um, so just just good heavy tank play from Silmoja. That's what you expect from such an experienced team. But Silmoja gets caught out. Beautiful shot there by Nervax onto the turret of him. Very, very hard shot to hit, but one of them would have hit it eventually. And see, play 80% win ratio on this map, and at the moment, they're proving the point. Certainly are. And we said it before, <laughs> TCM suffer a loss at this point. I feel it could spiral for them, and it would be such a shame to see them leaving the tournament early on. But core play, C play, have brought out the heavy guns doing the southern camp, and it's something that only minimal amount of teams have ever broken because it is so strong. Every angle is crossed off. Everything is locked down. The crossfires are absolutely key here, and there are no markers left unturned. And obviously, the game can still unfold off the back of it. If it keeps going this way, we're going to have to find out if maybe TCM are going to have to start looking towards that third map. But still, still Mojo is still looking for a route and still looking for an option available to him. Because at the moment, he's the only one doing so. Thoros letting off a shell, but nothing connecting. Kills also trying his luck there against Eurofish, I believe. So Mojo looking for a little peek onto the top of the kills. Or and we're kind of seeing edging forward to TCM. The Scouts on the right side are pretty much stationary, so you don't expect too much movement, although one's heading up towards the F line. Um, the F road, I should say. Basically, the road, if you're not aware, that looks like an F. Pretty standard um, description. Can I get what you, uh, it says on the tin? So still Mojo looking for another shot, and he's the playmaker right now. Also, probably the guy calling the shots, um, you know, in Kasna crew, he was the, the team leader. Did very well with him, two third places. You can't really, you know, start at that at all. And he's a very, very cool guy. So I would expect that he's um, really the guy calling it all and also playing it forward. Another shell, though, lands onto the MX-5200 DJ Red D. Yeah, bit of a painful connection. That's going to shake TCM, I'd believe, if anything. So now Still Mojo and DJ Red D very close on HP there, both taking one shell. Four minutes left. I, th I, I genuinely believe we're going to have a draw here. We were, we were theorizing this could be the option with the map pool we have. And Unless C play want to make a crazy counter move, which I, I don't feel would be their best of options here, it's down to TCM to make that play. Find the angle that's open, find the option there, but we have seen that this is a near on impossible situation to break down and get out of. So three minutes and 50 seconds left. Still Mojo trying to connect onto anything. Let's bear in mind, both the tier ones still alive. C play have every card still up their sleeve. Yeah, they have no pressure on them at all. Um, they're pretty comfortable. They've got the campfire going, having some uh, spam and just laying back and enjoying <laughs> life a little bit. Still Mojo trying to find some tier ones. He's just systematically going through each bush, making his shots and uh, wondering if he can actually take down one tier one. That will give TCM a little bit of an edge, but it will really depend if they can actually get the cap on the way. Three minutes and 20 seconds, that two minute mark, as Carmen said, is really where we see a yeah. decisive move coming out. And I don't think we're going to see anything before there from TCM. You can also see TCM three tanks around that church, and they've left the tier one up north. But more importantly, DJ Red Deep in that MX 5100 is in the F road. And that basically gives TCM at least one combat tank alive if C-Play decide to push around into the three around the uh, church. You never want to be in a situation where you've just got to rely on the tier ones because they can easily get caught out. They're slower than the AMX 5100. They can't do any damage, really. Yeah, okay, they can penetrate the um, the AMX 5100 and the AMX 3090 of the French line, but mm -hmm. it's it's 20 millimeter Spano. It's only really enough to do like 100 damage maximum. Okay, you could get set them on light, but it, it, you know, it's very, very hard to. At the moment, C-Play deciding to push, and DJ Red Deep takes a fistful of damage there, 384. Tier one in the back to support. Yeah, and let's see if TCM could do anything here. This is this is not going to be easy, though. As we said, they're kind of walking into a loss, but DJ Red Deep is still going forward, takes a huge amount of damage, down to 295 already. And, oh, wow, C-Play are going for the... Are they really going for the counter push at two minutes? I, I'm guessing Karma's words have struck true with them. They're, they're finding these connections pretty damn well, not receiving any damage until right then. Still Mojo does find a kill, so peeking out in that 5100. Thoros took down Trevors. 
Do not throw this C play. You're on the verge of doing very well here, but the counter cap has begun. Maybe TCM has got a trick up their sleeve, but Aki finds Saurus. Here we go. The action now gets underway, and the dead zone takes down Europa. She's going terribly wrong for TCM. The plan was almost paying off, but now the cap looking so far away from being completed. Yizni being surrounded on all fronts. He's fighting as hard as he can, but it's not going to be enough as the tier ones are the last bastion of hope, and Haki looks to put them out. One minute and 22 seconds left on the clock. Magus is actually sitting up in a very interesting position, basically in the middle of some of those buildings. So it's going to be very hard for Seaplay to get there in time. I don't think they have enough time. It's going to be about one and a half to two minutes to actually get into that place. But yeah, that went disastrously wrong for TCM Gaming. Look how much damage they did. Very little. Uh, the kills yeah. were down to 742. Okay, yeah, the dead zone went down. But that's really iterate, uh, reiterating how good that tank, that tank camp is up and towards the left south side. It's it's unbelievably hard to beat, and uh, C play played it perfectly. The question is, can they find Magus? Yeah, that's why um, that's why I said. I mean, it just takes a long time. Um, uh, Rasta could could be able to do this if he managed to get it, but 42 let's seconds see if he's got the left. Driving skills. <laughs> My, the gun depression that MX5100 is amazing. Oh, oh wow. But that's, that's not going to take him down. There's 32 seconds here. Magus might be able to save TCM. He, he actually qualified he, he, for season one of the WGL by actually playing the tier one and staying alive against the then Dinova. This might be the same case. 18 seconds. Dr. Tour might be able to turn this around, but it's going to be down to a 1v1. 10 seconds left. Magus can still get the draw here. They don't have enough time for the cap. So here we go. Dr. Tour up against Magus. 1v1 for the draw or the win. Seaplay might have just thrown this away. Ooh. Three seconds. Two seconds. Magus, can you believe it? He's done it again for them. He even he peaks at the, the end. Day. He just peaks at the end. Like, Dear what's up, bros? God. You can't come at me. I'm going to peek anyway. Whew, he just tested himself a little bit. Um, but what can we say? Just a camp on Ruhrberg. TCM tried something, but it didn't work. I still can't believe Magus was able to undo that. That's. You can see how calm he is. He's just like, sup, bros. I just I sat this. still for a whole game and won it. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, let's, let's be very serious about what this means now. I said the problem that could happen to TCM is if they get any negative aspect early on. So the first draw, I think, was e equal to both teams. I don't think there was an issue there. It was kind of like a null and void point, let's say. So... That one we can kind of say, all right, it was mines. They both went into this, no one was up. All right. Ruhmberg, though. Now, Ruhmberg, we can see that camp happening. But I don't expect it to be there. Then again, Seaplay brought it out. They went with the counterattack a little late, around the two-minute marker, as Carmen said is the best idea, and they did pull it off very well. They executed nicely, lost one tank, that's it. But Magus being able to scamper away and hide away. Now, I want to ask you, do you take that as a bonus or a negative? Magus being able to stay alive... Mm. Great, but they also lost all of their team and Neron lost the map. Do you walk away going, no worries, guys, we got the draw? Or how the hell did we get to the point where we had to draw that out by me just sitting in this one small corner? Well, just because he is in that one small corner, do, corner does kind of suggest that TCM knew it was going to happen mm -hmm. and had a contingency plan, which was that camp. Um, everyone knows that if you push against that uh, campy position that um, T Play had, then you're going to almost always lose unless you screw up like lucky cracky mm. then it's very likely that you're going to lose so i think it was uh, more of a contingency plan and tcm just wanted to try something they had a little bit of an idea with the tier one in the cap they thought they would be able to hang on a little bit longer to actually allow that cap to go through but it just wasn't good enough and c play had they had everything done and they also knew what to do well, that's our thoughts on the matter. Let's head over to the analysis desk to actually get everyone else's because that is a very deciding moment then Thank you very much. Uh, Magus, come on, man. What, what was that about? Wow. That last thing, I thought they got him. They jumped off, got the hit on him, 25 damage. I was like, oh, he's gone. And then it was like, nope, Magus. You pop. cannot shoot there with 5100. It's a good it. decision to go with T1 there. Yeah. But getting T1 there, uh, it's really hard now after the patch. And I, I was stuck, in, stuck there like two or three times when I was doing it. Ketevan from Lemming Train is the master of doing it. He never stacks there. But with this, I, I think that they should get Dr. Tuyer there uh, because you cannot shoot from this position where he was stacked and he will be dead by T1. Win for them after the camp and at the next map they will just stay in the bushes. But I know, 
I will throw Magus to the end of the world with this. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look at the actual moment itself. Let's actually take a look right now and see it again. As Magus is there, he's actually stuck in the story. He cannot move. But Rusta's like, okay, I can actually get him. If he managed to land on me correctly, he could win the match right here. But he instead pushes him through, and Magus is now free to get inside, but doesn't want to move, because if he runs away, Rusta will be able to get the shot. He waits, he waits, he waits, and it's like... Oh my god, he can just drive away, and then Magus gets away, and wow, it's just... I mean, C-Play, a lot of people in the chat were like, oh, it should be C-Play's victory, but then again, C-Play did camp and wait for the attack from CPM, uh, CCM, so it's like... I'm not sure who, who I sympathize with more, whether it's the fact that Magus managed to win by hiding or that C-Play wasn't actually going to win anyway because they just waited, and if TCM didn't attack, they wouldn't have won. So what's your thoughts on the matter? Well, I think this was expected. Like I said, that uh, C-Play doesn't want to play Darwinberg. They played the South, they, they just thought that let's draw it out and go to the next map. But uh, TCM went to and tried to defuse the ca camp, but uh, I think that they did from the wrong direction. They went from the one line, when they should have gone from the left-hand side, from the church, and by doing that, uh, they would have taken that much damage, and they might have been able to do it. Even Isuba did it like that. Maybe, maybe. It's all hearsay now, but Magus saving the day, I think. He's never going to let us uh, hit yeah. the end of it either. He's going to be like, oh, well, you know that time that I saved the match because uh, my oh. extra T1 skills? And yeah, Magus, we know, we know. Yeah, but he will, you know, he will always counter that. He gave the spot at the first Wargaming League Seasons Finals on the Dreamhack with this T1 with the Nova match. Everybody remembers that, and this was something really, so, you know, it's now a balance. We have to n wait for the next fail from him, so <laughs> now will be a time to troll. Well, uh, we can then first of all talk about the first match then, because in the first match we did see some <laughs> fails fail. from TCM <laughs> as they were trying. The reason it was a draw, for anyone who wasn't paying attention, the uh, draw happened on the first map because TCM were trying to get the high ground on the far west of the map. Twice they tried to push their tanks up and twice they failed to do so. So <laughs> it wasn't a draw intentionally from TCM, but they were unable to literally do their strategy. They, they somehow failed to move their tanks correctly. And I think that that balances it out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, true. That was true fails, but also this position isn't that good, like it wasn't the first time. But still, Taurus, and I don't know who was the uh, uh, other your guy. Office. Your office. office. Yeah, so your friend. So <laughs> they both also will be tried. Okay, well, we have map number three, which is Cliff, I believe. Yeah. And we will go back over to Pansy and Laughter. They can give us into that match. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, it's glad to see the failure is appreciated, especially when it's one of, the, one of their own friends. It's like, oh, wait, who failed? Oh, it's my friend. Brilliant. I can give him more grief now. You guys are evil on the analysis desk. Evil, I tell you. But still, as I mentioned, Cliff coming up. Next map. I don't know what to expect. There's no one really to hide from Magus this time, though. He can't just scamper away somewhere and uh, mm. try and draw it out. But then if there is a draw, we're going to Sand River. Yeah. You're right. I, I'm I'm a little worried now. <laughs> but then again, Schoolbus did beat, beat TCM on this map, and C Play beat Kazakura on this map. So <laughs> just going back on that, C Play do like the, the stronger team. But again, C Play did some really weird tactic cheesy, against Kazakura. Cheesy, I think we can call it yeah, maybe. Yeah, it cheesy tactic. It was a bit of um, like American cheese, so not proper cheese, but yeah. like fake cheese. You yeah, know? yeah. So uh, they they tried that and it worked. So I don't think they can do it again because you know TCM is going to be hope expecting they'd it. They'd expect it. Yeah, I mean, C Play have tried that uh, one tactic on steps a million times. You'd expect every other team to uh, expect it, but even Kazan got caught out a little bit, but yeah. did manage to counter yeah. it. So it's going to be an interesting matchup. For me, C Play look a little bit more confident after Ruhrenberg, just on their faces. So mm. I kind of expect them to win it. And if they do, it would be near them coffin. Well, this is the deciding moment near on towards how the game gets played out. <laughs> Cliff, not the map I thought we'd be seeing the decider, but regardless, in the north in red is TCM, in the south in blue it is C Play. And um, what sort of tank lineups are we getting here? Uh, five MX 1390s from the side of TCM and uh, double Pershing triple MX 1390 from C Play. Now I guarantee that those two Pershings have the uh, dirt gun on it. The dirt gun on it. I think 105 millimeters. I'm sorry if that's wrong, but it does 320 average damage. And when you're driving, it's the most insane gun ever because it doesn't have an aiming circle. It's the, it does, but it's the tiniest aiming circle ever. So you can hit MX-1390s on the move and you do 320 damage. 
which is pretty much game over for that tank because it has hardly any HP. Eurofish also getting caught there a little bit, so it's going to be all about those Pershings and if they can get into the game. Yeah, uh, a, little, a little bit overextended there from Eurofish, I feel. It got a little bit uh, over overzealous towards it, but Ruster taking a bit of a beating straight away, but no, that's the kills, or looking like they might want to execute very soon. DJ Deep goes a little low. It's a tentative start, but a lot of damage done between these guys, and it looks like T7 are trying to back away a little. Let's say just leave a little bit of room to breathe here, because Corpo are getting a little bit close. Yeah, bit damaged on DJ Deep, about 50% mm -hmm. HP. Uh, Rustus hovering around the 60% mark. Damage coming from Yizni, and at the moment he's the key factor there for TCM Gaming. Constantly managing to do damage, constantly managing to keep the pressure on, but when he has to reload, that's when C play is going to push forwards. And because of the amount of damage they've already done to TCM, those two Pershings are going to be able to come in and just dirt the hell out of DJ Red Deep, oh, removing from the game. Challenge. As long as they're into close range, yeah, that'll be great if I can challenge your <laughs> just, just 1v1. You just come on, yeah. <laughs> just a sort of random 1v1 in the middle yeah. of the map, yeah, great. Obviously, that will work out well for him, but I think your fish <laughs> would end up winning that one. No offense, Haki. Wow, that's harsh. Well, best, third best player in the whole league, in my opinion. Third, yeah. fourth around that mark um, for Eurofish. Yizni mm. now heading back down again, so probably now reloaded, looking for those tier ones, and maybe even Ruster from behind. Because he's from 627 HP, it would be a three shot, four shot perhaps for Yizni. So interesting stuff from that team. Beautiful shot there by Dr. Tour. A little hip shot there, and uh, that Swedish Viking doing his job. Mm, he is neat. I just caught a glimpse of Ruster as well as he is on the push back around. And this is a very tentative uh, map between these two. No one wants to make that mistake. No one wants to give the game away. You can see Eurofish having to be very cautious on this peak. He's already got a little bit of damage from being a little overextended, but fell back into line. But C-Play looking a little bit more, a little bit more damaged overall, but not by a substantial amount. It's the only Dr. Tour going down really for uh, C-Players. It's a tier one, but not the end of the world, but considering their last strategy, they utilized those tier ones quite well and could do with having that back in play again. But Ruster maybe looking for a shot here. Still not sold by this position. We saw Kasner doing this towards the, uh, I believe it was Kasner, if I'm not mistaken. I might have been uh, wrong on that one, but I remember seeing that double stack on that small little mound really didn't pay off, and I'm hoping they don't uh, overgo on it. And is that the gun you expect? Yep, there that's the go. dive gun. Not good at long range. Pretty damn it looks awful. adorable, to be fair, though. It's like a little dinky gun, right? <laughs> it does look like a toy gun on it. It's like, have a big tank with tiny little toy gun. But that's actually the whole point. Because it's for the M4 Sherman, it's like a tier five. Yeah. When you put it onto a tier eight tank, basically it overmatches it. So you have a really high tier tank, which has got a really low tier gun, but the gun still does a lot of damage. So you get good aiming time, you get good accuracy at close ranges. Whereas on the M4 Sherman, it has none of those things. So it's kind of interesting. Mm. TCM are pushing along the bottom now. Maybe looking for a, a little way into it behind um, C play, is... but Ruster on the top could actually catch them out. We won't be able to do a, a huge amount of he'll damage, get the spot, but he'll be able to get the spots and the information immediately for C-Play, and then they can react with those Pershings, which would be disastrous. But at the moment, I think TCM are kind of doing it correctly, as long as the Eurofish can stay alive on the flank. Let's find out. This is dangerous times, though. Ruster being a pivotal player. He's already going to connect on towards Thoris. Gets a little bit back, however, so the plan has been rumbled, pretty much, and we've seen teams crumble under this pressure once the counter push comes out, but I'm not sure if C-Play will go for that just yet. Yeah, there's a lot of fire coming towards Ruster. He's pretty much negated from the game at the moment. He's got so many turrets turned towards him, but will there be a response from C-Play? The kills are now heading around. He's playing the Pershing, so the response is probably going to be on Yizni because Ruster can peek and do the damage that all he wants. First shell does land onto GJ Red 3, 309 damage in the dirt. Still Mojo Magus now heading towards the cap, and I think we'll see C play collapse first with the kills or and then with Ruster. We have three different plans of attack going on right now. One on your screen, one down by the cap, and another towards the center of this, which is Eurofish going into the Lion's Den. He's been met by Hacky and the dead zone taken away. Not sure why he went into a 1v3 then. Maybe looking that he'd have a cheekier angle to find, but he's just been dispatched of, and Yizni looks like he's going to fall to the same fate, but there we go. Finally, there's a response from Steel Mojo towards Ruster, but Thoris receives a absolutely huge amount of damage, down to nothing. Look at this. Yizni's low, Dieter at deep slow, and was Thoris, and they are being absolutely decimated. Look at the confidence right now. DJ at deep just blown to pieces. The kills or just rolled off the hill, took him out. And now just still Mojo pretty much in this one with the two tier ones 
and there's not much you can do in this situation now. No, but uh, Seaplay could make the mistake of not going for the TCM's caps. They could put all their resources back up towards stopping this cap, which they don't really need to I do. I think Hacky's there, though. One, hacky, one player, Hacky's heading up north, but might not be enough. There's 30 seconds left on the clock. Still, Mojo has to deal with the kills, though, and that reload is not great on the Pershing. No, certainly not. This is a worrying time. Remember, this was the downfall of TCM. They did not account for this, but here we go. The kills off. Still, Mojo off of it. And there we go. Dead Zone picks up Magnus. They've worked this well. The Two to one crossfire coming through from the dead zone and Trevor's out on the side, joined by DeKills or still Mojo is in a world of pain. Nervax puts him down and now the misery as now Devil knows that it's pretty much game over. And Devil, the only one left. One minute and 17 seconds left on the clock. I think it's going to be game over. Pretty much sure it's going to be game over. See play with that double Pershing working out perfectly for them. The amount of damage those two tanks could do was phenomenal. I mean, gotta say, the variation they've shown on this map alone has been very impressive. That's two separate, completely well-rounded tactics. They've just gone, all right, let's pull these out of the cars today because Devil is going to be rammed out of this one. And C-Play, can you believe it? I do not know <laughs> how bad TCM must feel right now, but they have no one to blame but themselves in this. 100%. They put themselves in a hull-down position against two hull-down tanks, the two Pershings. That's the worst position you want to be in. And then Yisney deciding to go behind that rock, also very, very bad. If he wasn't there, he wouldn't have gone down first, and it's still TCM could have had a chance. But he needs to be there to try and counter um, Ruster up on that hill. So just bad calls all around. And Eurofish, people have been saying it since the beginning of today. They've been saying it the whole season. When he's really amazing, he can go through, he can win, he can make everything work for that team. But that time, it didn't work and went down. Play the team that I've been saying from the start of the season have shown glimmers of real potential, real grit and fortitude, have shown that they really can play at the top level, but uh, obviously know each other very well by this point. And I, I, it's, it's always horrible when you have to knock out your own friends from tournaments. It's, mm -hmm. it's a horrible feeling, but then they see play played very well. They played smart. They got the right map choices. They got the right way of playing the sides, and they just played out smartly. I, I don't think we can say anything other than that. TCM, it just did not go the way they needed. The, the maps, <laughs> mines, starting off on a map that was your deciding factor of a loss just prior to then is a questionable choice at the best of times. It was drawn out. We discussed the boost a little on the analysis desk then. It didn't really pay out for them. Second map, Ruinberg, saved by Magus more than anything. That would have been a loss flat out regardless mm -hmm. of that one if he wasn't there. And then Cliff. It was, it was a matter of TCM just trying to hold on, it felt, rather than ever trying to lead the game. And C-Play just showed us that, you know, a team that comes into this with the right mentality, with the right amount of practice, can cause any upset that they need to. And we said at the beginning that if C-Play kind of relaxed a little bit, yep. it didn't go for crazy tactics, and they could win it. You know, TCM lost that whole thing just based off a crazy yeah. tactic. Pushing up below, not ever a good idea because of those two Pershings. Um, and at the end of the day, Seaplay just had to sit back, react, and let TCM make the mistake, which is unfortunately a very common characteristic for that team. If you leave them to it, they'll beat themselves. Seems to be another factor for them. Uh, it's, 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 not, it, it's quite sad for me to even say that TCM will be pretty much done for now, but it's, it's the way the cookie crumbles. If you don't turn up on the day and you don't play the best game you can, that, that's how it goes down. And, you know, people at home, you're saying, you know, why are they going for the draw straight away? And I think TCM might be asking themselves that question a little later on. But obviously, do make sure you go on Twitter. Use that hashtag WGLEU and let me know your thoughts about the game just passed. But, guys, let's go down to the stage and find out from Seaplay how that must feel. Thank you very much, Pansy. I'm here with Ruster from Seaplay. And only a three-game series, this one. Uh, but definitely one full of emotion. Look, a lot has been said that you guys, obviously, being one of the younger teams coming through, uh, you know, really working hard to get here through the season. Now, you guys were really loud in those last few games, really, really loud. Even the kills, I could hear him over everything. Are you guys a team that's really driven by that momentum? Do you find it hard to sort of bring it back when you're down? Uh, because it definitely seemed like you, when you guys had the momentum, you just ran away with that last game. Yeah, I think you could definitely say that you saw it like in the game versus Kastner. We just, we lost the first uh, map on steps and then it was really hard for us to come back. You obviously get one point if, if you draw. And so we had to come, you know, they could just uh, sit back and camp. So it was, it was really hard for us. 
So let's talk about the last map, Cliffs. Of course, we saw two draws earlier on, uh, sort of, you know, games that you got, you knew you had to win everyone or hold on. But Cliff was really it, uh, essentially. Either if, you, if you drew that, I went to Sand River. Can you, can you just lay it out for me, the strategy for you guys? Did it work out the way you planned it to? Or did you have to make some adjustments on the fly? Uh, we, we trained really a lot, like you mentioned already, and we trained this Pershing tactic a lot. Uh, if you might have noticed, we didn't use the normal gun on the Pershing, we used the derp gun uh, with uh, heat. And uh, yeah, 350 alpha damage, is, this is like insane, and you have the same reload. So this was, this was really important uh, part of our tactic, and it worked uh, just uh, out like we intended it to work out. Now, you guys obviously have a chance to make it into, into tomorrow after winning this game. I mean, it's Kaz the Crew or School Bus. Who, we, who would you rather go up against? Let's be honest. Uh, to be honest, uh, definitely School Bus for two reasons. We already played versus Kasna. Uh, they know our tactics, they know how we play now. And uh, second thing, uh, uh, no offense, but I think Kasna is a really good team. I think they, they, I think they actually finished top two, I think. Well, thank you very much for that, Ruster, and congratulations to your team. Obviously, your C play will be moving towards the next game in the lower bracket. But uh, after that series, Let's, uh, let's put this one under the microscope a little bit more. Dorjan, take it away. Thank you, Mitch. Actually, we were going to say about, I didn't think he would do it, but we were going to do it, those Pershings. At the end, we actually looked up the stats on them because uh, this will notice immediately. It was like, wait a minute, what is the gun on that Pershing? And these two started laughing going, they've won it. They've won it. They, they, they have won this game. <laughs> you can game. just make a proof. And I, I will prove it that they actually said, so at the moment, Snizzle, 3-2 to TCM. That's what he thought. Ah, didn't get it right. Almost. Myself? I thought it's 3-1 to TCM. What do I know? But both Carmen and Wilkie, 3-2 to C-Play. And even, at that last, even in that last battle, yeah. I was convinced TCM had won it. I was convinced TCM had this. And then the close-up of the Pershing. And two reactions happened at this desk. One was, they've lost. Look at the Pershing's gun. Silly. And they won. Look at those Pershing's guns. That's amazing. <laughs> it was complete split reaction. It was amazing. And we checked the stats. And it was the only thing that was vulnerable is the accuracy. But everything else is amazing. So, Wilkie. Uh, yeah, in, in the last game, I felt that uh, TCM got outpicked because uh, I the, it, all about the mind games again. Like, yeah. C played thought that TCM will go with the 53090s. So, let's take the person with the derp gun and just outpick them right away. And it worked. It's a huge it's risk, worked. though, isn't it? If, yeah. they, if they take high risk, high reward. Very high risk, high reward. And that's exactly what you said about yeah. his core play from the start. But you think, have a different theory about this. My first theory is why isn't it? Why? <laughs> what did he do? Well, I was. I set my hopes in him. Uh. He should actually win this for me, but I'm disappointed. But the thing is, they had the 1390s up there and they rotated back. I don't know why they did it. They could have stayed up, like maybe secured the highest ground on the hill and then they would have an advantage on the Pershings because they are too slow to get yeah. the, the good yeah, positions. Definitely. And on the first game, as you're seeing now, um, TCM's big failure Mirror. on the first map, yeah. they did have a plan, but they couldn't enable it. <laughs> Twice they tried it. They, tr they went up at the beginning of the seventh minute and they tried it. Then they came back at the beginning of the sixth minute, at the end of the sixth minute, yeah. and tried to get in and up there again. <laughs> you see them backing up. They're going in again. Yes, They're going to try and? it one more time and it doesn't work out for them. And this means they had to draw on the first map, and I, I don't know. This set the tone, or what? What did this change? This, this change probably, you know, when you are doing something like that and it doesn't work, it just makes you angry, literally angry, because I did this 20 times, and it, all the time I was there. Now, mm -hmm. in the most important game, I didn't do go good. Somebody is looking at your mind. What the hell you done? And you know, it's starting like you know, be calm, but it's still there, somewhere there. Second map, attack, and just because of the Magus, they almost, they, al they almost had it. And this is one of the things that you also have to, you know, bad, that you feel that you are losing the game. Mm -hmm. You don't have, you know, you don't have these uh, decisions. You have fails. And then you see these two Pershings. And the reaction is, we are playing standard or, you know, we are playing something different. Okay, play standard. You play standard and you see two, uh, two Pershings with 
wind with this. Uh, oh, hold on, hold on. Well, let's scale it back a second because you've just jumped the, tr the thought train. So you're saying that the first thing that happened, starting to make you frustrated with the draws yeah. on the first two maps, no, the, the led into the frustrations in the third map because in the third map they've decided to take standard tactics because the, the funny tactics aren't working. Yeah. And C play totally read it right. They're going to go light tanks. Let's take those potions. And we got the replay here actually of one of the moments where the attack started going wrong. At this point, it looked like TCM were doing great. HP-wise, position-wise, they were doing fine. And then what happens? Wookie. Well, your fiscal uh, out a bit too far in, in the middle. So they C play uh, outplays him, killed him in the middle. And at th that point, C play, uh, not C play, TCM was forced to attack. But they were so scared about those Pershings with the dope guns so that you have to attack, but there is only thing you can attack are those Pershings, and you have the slight armor to MX-30 90s. It's not a good place to be. It's not a good place to be at all. And your fish is one of these guys that we thought would be the linchpin of TCM. He's like the Razor um, powered guy, and it's like powered by Razor guy. We thought that he would do so well, and he was first to take out, be taken out, and that just made things fall apart. And yeah, like I said uh, in, in the start, um, Sometimes he he over commits and gets himself killed. To, be, to me, it wasn't that big mistake from Ralfish. It was just you know the placing of the tanks. They knew where the tanks. They knew that second ago, the 3090 probably Isne was there down, and he had to be back because he was afraid of Raster, mm -hmm. and he had to be back. They knew that he did have this opportunity to go there because you know the tank is already not in position. They took down Ralfish. The guys from the second uh, side of the uh, of the map were, you know, just afraid of the Pershing, and only one was staying there. The second just went there. They, you know, Astor, also Rooster shot two really good shots, only taking one, and you know, you have this. On the right side, you are losing. On the other side, there is a Pershing who can kill you and take, you know, down everything you you already have the advantage. So. But it wasn't looking good. I must say that our second player that we were pointing out about uh, C play, Trevors, was driving one of those Pershings. I wonder if he had anything to do with that tactic, because I have not seen it in the season for the last, well, for ages. I mean, when, when was the last time you saw that play being played with the Pershings? On the trainings. Just Only on trainings. the trainings. Uh, there a lot of um, Russian guys were trying with Chinese tank, with T30-3. And really this, uh, and T30, no, T30-2. Because the almost is also the big gun, but it has a bit more accuracy, if I'm right. And it doesn't look good. Why? Because uh, we were trying this on the steps. And it's very hard to connect the shell. If you connect the shell and you're lucky with the uh, random generator, it pays off. But in this case, in this high stake match, I would probably rather, you know, try to be defensive and play, wait for Sun River, especially if I know that TCM is not bad on Sun River. But Raster made the other decision, and, you know, he took all home, so great for him. And it was one of those matches, it was full of turmoil from my point of view. I was watching it and I thought, oh, TCM, they're doing well, they're solid, and then they they had to attack on the second map, and we obviously came back and talked about that already, where Magus survives and keeps them in it, and we're like, okay, that, that's standard, we expected that to happen, but it was just cliff. They looked like TCM had it. From my point of view, I was like, okay, they won the opening exchange, they just have to reload, either rush the Pershings or go somewhere where the Pershings aren't, and they didn't do it, and they were picked off. Your fish first, and then it just, you said they were forced to attack, they attacked against that line of Pershings, just wasn't working. One of the tanks were really low for C, uh, C play. Raster, 199 HP. And they wanted to get him, and that maybe- It is the position the you cannot horse. take it. You cannot okay. take him if he doesn't make any mistakes. So that means that the overplay occurred, you think, that they were trying to get this tank, take out Rust, take him out of the game, and that overplay is what caused the... the I the rather think the mistake up. was taking the down, this 390 down, to take the Raster. He was spotted by Tuyer. They took down the T1. But other, but guys knew from C-Play, guys knew where their, one of the tanks is. So we have only four enemies. Yeah. Another one is was spotted, so they have only three guys. And they already knew, you know, you can put it in the mind where the tanks are. So this won the game. Also, if the guys from uh, the guys from CPL at the beginning have this disadvantage of the HP, but still 340 HP advantage on each Pershing, and it's um, the sum almost six, uh, 680. So it's almost like uh, half of 70% uh, of 390. 
So the HP advantage yeah. wasn't actually there, yeah. you're saying. So it looked like it was there because of the yeah. HP bars, but re yeah. in reality it wasn't there. And even even more, sorry, I was mistaken because, no, it's C14, I, I was right. It, sorry. it doesn't, yeah. I think we get the picture that yeah. it was. <laughs> uh, and HP on these Pershings was really, in fact, they were the linchpin. If it wasn't for the Pershings, it would have been a lot harder for Cplay, but Cplay proving themselves here today, doing really well. But anyway, that's enough from us about that match. It was crazy, in my opinion, absolutely crazy. We should go over to Mitch and Millie on the social media. I've managed to find my way over to the social media corner here, of course, with the lovely and effervescent Melly. Now, we've got plenty happening, a real buzz, actually, on our Twitter and Facebook feeds. What have you got for us? Well, actually, I'm taking a look through all the submissions you guys posted on facebook.com slash WGLEU regarding the fan art challenge. And uh, actually, there are some quite funny, funny, funny pictures submitted. I've seen a few, actually, yeah. Yeah, but I think the community can do better. Well, I, I already saw them doing better, and uh, people, there's a lot of cool stuff on the line, so I think we can ex expect a bit more from you guys. And I know that you can do it better, and, well, it's still a bit time left, I guess, until Heaps the day ends, yeah. and um, you still have plenty of time to submit maybe something new if you already submitted something nice. Do it better. <laughs> I know you can. <laughs> well, I... Well, I'm never happy, like never happy with uh, the submissions because I know that they can do it better. Well, I know Why you're hard to for less? you're hard to please, but don't forget what's on the line here. Of course, uh, a type 59, which you've got, you've just got people in an absolute spin. I think, and it's a fantastic tank to get your hands on, of course. And so. the death adder. Exactly. And the death adder, and it contains a bonus code as well, if I'm not if, if, if I'm mm. not mistaken. And let's see, it should be somewhere in here. Uh, <laughs> I can't unbox it. Maybe I can. Well, why not? But I can't open it. Well, of course, is that and the, uh, the Goliath's mouse pad as well. <laughs> That's up for grabs. So don't hesitate to get in, in, in touch with us as well. Facebook's a great way to do it. Twitter is also a good way to do it. If you want to get in touch with any one of us uh, personally as well, you can do that on Twitter. It's a hashtag. And if you've uh, seen anything amusing, I'm not going to eat any lemons this time around. But uh, <laughs> yeah, how's that going? Why not, actually? Why not? Because it's not funny anymore. I mean, well, we talk like... about that all the time and people still love it. So I think if someone can get us a lemon, we can make uh, Mitch eat it again. And in the meantime, I actually managed to unpack the beautiful This is, this is now an editor. unboxing and product exactly. review, ladies and gentlemen. That's really nice. It Ooh. is. Look at this. It's even much better behind the black. Could you do this? Sure, sure. Oh, no, you have a microphone. You can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yes, people, um, get in the race for these awesome stuff. I actually want to get to that bonus code oh, somewhere in here. Surely. Where is it? I can't find it. Oh, I can. I found it. I found it. And I can't, I can't actually show you the code. But this is it. And it's in there. And it's, it contains... Do you want to say it? <laughs> Panzerkampfwagen? Uh, yeah, yeah. Panzerkampfwagen. Vier. Yeah. Vier. Hydraulic. Hydraulic? Tank. Tank. I did pretty well. Tank. I was actually yeah, okay. Yeah, no, it's good. I feel good about that. Actually, well, look. But yes. Well, people, as said, head over to facebook.com slash WGLEU. Take part in our competitions, the Fan Art Challenge, and of course, all the votes in, uh, before every matchup where you can vote for your favorite team and predict the exact scoreline of this matchup. And if you get, guess right, and if you get lucky and get chosen as one of the five winners, you can also win a bonus code containing, uh, containing a T15, seven days of premium, 1K gold, and, uh, and a garage solo, of course. Which you need to keep the tank in there, exactly. of course. Exactly. That's how it goes, right? So, um, and of course, get involved via Twitter by using the hashtag WGLEU and join a Twitch chat for some nice conversations in there. Plenty of nice conversation. Do keep it going, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to go to a break very briefly, and we'll be back soon with some more Water Tanks action. Of course, this is the Wargaming.net League EU Season 4 Finals. Don't go anywhere.